Well, I'm with a very delighted Tony Drago. Just won a big match, Tony, and it looks like you've survived Judgment Day. Yeah, it's the most important thing because uh, in the last couple of days you're trying to win, you're hoping other people lose. Now when you qualify, it's all, it's race to nine, winner breaks, it's, a, it's no excuse, it's all in your hands. So, you know, I really look forward to it. I, I would have been bad if I come all this way not to make at least the judgment, you know, the last 64. And now you'll be able to enjoy your match tonight with Efren Reyes. Yeah, it should be great. I mean, the last thing I wanted is like needing, not even to win, needing even one wreck. Because that would have been a very, very nervous match for me. But now, you know, I, I believe Efren is true, I'm true. So, uh, you know, the next best thing now is to entertain the crowd. Can Tony Drago be the world nine ball champion? Yeah, why not? I mean, <laughs> I can, yeah, I mean. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm playing good. Uh, if I break good, winner breaks. You know, if you're in the balls, you know, you're not going to miss that often. So if I break good and uh, I had some luck on the way, yeah, why not? I know a lot of people would love it, Tony, and I'd be one of them. All the best, Thank buddy. Thank you very much. Steve Davis, Jim Weish in commentary. Uh, who will give the magician the tornado head-to-head -head and the crowd making their way in? every single cent. This will uh, surely be a, a full house and uh, don't go anywhere because it could be uh, pretty quick as well. Very relaxed looking Tony Drago. I can add uh, another blurb to Reyes's resume. He won the overall championship at the Derby City racks. Classic First rack a little earlier Reyes this year, and that no mean feat because they came from all over the planet to play in that one. But he does play all games one pocket, bank pool, nine ball, straight pool, master of them all. Well, he struggled like many have struggled in the group phase. It's, it's never a certainty. I think we may see the best of Efren here. A little bit of the heat off the levels of expectation. All of a sudden, lessened the worry of qualifying. He's up against, as was said by John McDonald, the fastest player in the world. Certainly in the world of snooker, he's very, very fast. But I suppose Luke Sarvis has got to push him pretty closely from Canada, hasn't he, Jim? Wouldn't want to live on the difference between those two. Excellently controlled break there from Efren and would consider himself slightly unlucky to have not got an easier shot on this two. I bet when he played that shot, he also had in mind uh, the, s the snooker behind the five. <laughs> crowd laughing there as uh, Tony Drago was so quickly down in his shot that Efren was in his eye line and he, as he was sitting down. Not an easy game to play when, when you've actually qualified. Sometimes when there's absolutely uh, no tension in the game, sometimes you don't play your best. I have a feeling that Tony would like to get this feather in his cap anyway. You never know who you might meet in the knockout stages. That's right. The other thing, uh, as perhaps not many people know at home, it's not just that Tony Drago got to the semi-finals of this World Championship last year, but he plays an awful lot of pool now. And of all the snooker players, I would say he is the most, certainly the most practiced, and, and I think perhaps has achieved the most in the world of pool from the snooker aspect by winning the Masters last year. He's very much a threat. He's very much a pool player now, an all-rounder. Waste little time in opening accounts here in this one. 1-0 one to the Tornado, even though Reyes with a very good break off. Even when they speed it up, there's not much difference between Drago at that speed and in real time. A 
Our referee, Michaela Tab, just sets the diamond. Tony will be looking to break into this cluster of colors. Second rack, Tony Drago to break. Seeing the wing ball going rack, down Tino. with regularity there again. Kicked badly into the pocket. Foul shot, ball in hand. And I don't expect this to be a particularly slow match. I doubt, I doubt very much whether Ephraim will get involved in any tactical battles here. It will be a case of trying to run the racks as quick as possible and then settle down to prepare for the next phase of the tournament. Not really any problems with this particular set of balls. You know, Steve, he uses a very long cue, considering he's only about five foot eight, does Reyes, about 60, 61 inches, I was told. Well, a lot of these players are not as proficient with the rest um, because they don't need to be really so if you have a slightly longer cue and you can adjust where you hold where you grip it you can reach a lot further across the table for those awkward shots the only problem here a little bit of work to do from five to six just overcooked it a fraction but actually may have worked out quite nicely I think plays with a very old Paul Q. He doesn't get sucked into the world of the new brigade of Q makers who talk a good Q. Perhaps are no better than the other ones. It's difficult to say, but uh, Efren's just got his old favourite, I believe. Simple nine to have split the opening two racks. Deposited, and the magician back on level pegging with Tony Drago. Not many empty seats here in the World Trade Center. This inception of the Whirlpool Championship heading across the Pacific for the first time in six years to packed audiences, young and old. And Efren will be breaking off in rack number three, a star-studded field more world titles than you can possibly count without having to take your shoes and socks off. Rack three, Efren Reyes to break, one rack each. Always interesting to watch Efren break. He's not one of the hardest breakers in the game, but obviously he understands what's required for each table he plays on. He was using the cut break a couple of years ago, which makes us that the, what the cue ball come to the side cushion after contacting the one ball. He's not using that this time considering himself slightly unfortunate to have been hampered by the eight ball on this blue two. But he's got the possibility of using the eight ball to knock the blue two into the center pocket. Yes, many players in the game feel that if Reyes does have an Achilles heel, it's in the form of his break. Mind you, you wouldn't know it after the first two he's hit here. Very imaginative as displayed by that shot. Speaking of the break again, I remember a few years back, and I think it was the year Reyes won the world championship, he knocked in eight racks in a row against Francisco Bustamante. You've got to have a break to be able to do that. Somewhat easier to break off on the television tables when the, the cloth is very dry, no humidity in the, in the table at all and in the cloth. And I, I'm not too sure whether we've actually seen Earl Strickland uh, talking about that yet, but he's got some interesting views on the break off shot in the World Championship. And yeah, we've been somewhat fortunate here. We haven't had any rain during play with all the doors open and it's been very humid already. If it ever started raining, these tables might really become a little more sluggish and certainly the throw off the cushions would change. It was the earthquakes I was more worried about, Jim. I understand they get about one of those a month here too. 
And you know there's a player in the United States they call the earthquake, Keith McCready. He'd enjoy it here. And right now the enjoyment is falling on the shoulders of Efren Reyes. 2-1 ahead of the tornado, Tony Drago. Round robin action still, it's judgment day. These two will survive to play into the, into the last 64. And you can see this group completed now as well, all seven played. Kevin Smith there, needed to win his last match to have any chance of qualifying from the UK. Shoulder going through. A softer, slightly softer break from Tony. He can break harder than that. And it's paid off in one respect, but perhaps not in another. So perhaps a safety. One onto the two ball, send the cue ball across the table behind the five. There's an option. Missed the two and has left Efren a chance. Can he manufacture a shot to get back out for position on that two ball? That's not easy. The green six is very much in the way of that. May just have enough room. The green six helped him. A very useful little touch on the six there. Now stretching over. Left-handed, ensuring to leave an angle on this three ball to get back the opposite end of the table for the pink four next. Just got to decide which side of the brown seven he decides to play for. Very cleverly taking that out of the equation, using all the angles of the table, spinning the cue ball around with that side spin you can see. So clearly with these spotted cue balls. Steve, I saw a set of snooker balls with a cue ball like that. I wonder what the chances are of getting that one through. Yeah. You know, I'm sure people think it may put you off the shot. After a while, you don't even notice. You know, you don't look at the ball uh, in that way. Um, I suppose you could say there's an optical illusion sometimes that you can't see the middle of the ball because there's a spot to one side or the other. But generally, you look through the cue ball somewhat. Reyes smoothly and confidently playing like the champion he is. No pressure on this. Reyes would certainly like to lose, to win, and not, not lose a good record. Drago has a bit to do. Uh, Efren Reyes at the table. He knows he has survived Judgment Day. And he's uh, leading. Tony Drago, 3-1. Five balls down on the break as well. <laughs> not bad at all, let's have to commentary. I know there's a little bit of luck attached, but um, but a terrible position on the two ball, look. Nowhere near it. Not so easy to play safe when there's less balls on the table, so trying to manufacture a good safety shot here. Perhaps he'll play the double. He may play the bank. Definitely didn't there. You can see by where the cue ball finished up, that he was no intentions of playing position for the three. So what can Tony do? This isn't easy. Playing the safety to just in front of the middle pocket. And it's just poked its nose out. It is very difficult to pot into that middle, I would imagine. But it's a, a realistic opportunity into the corner pocket. It may go in the middle. Didn't look a problem. 4-1. And Tony Drago looks like he's going to be breaking to save the match. And this 
certainly will help Efren Reyes move up in the table in his group. As we said earlier, both players through to the last 64. They've survived Judgment Day. Just jockeying for position now when the seedings are made. 4-1 Reyes over Drago. Wasn't the certainty for Efren this the end of this particular league phase. He lost his first match and then dropped another match and um, had things gone differently with the other results, he may have had to come to his last match under pressure. As it was, um, the bottom four cancelled each other out somewhat. And so Efren found himself with a, a relieved last match. Yes, that's the case with Tony as well, Steve. I was watching him on one of the outside tables. He did not want to have to come in here and beat Reyes to qualify. Right, and six. had he lost that outside match, that's exactly what he one. would have had to do. And he was 3-0 down in that match as well. Ball made off the break. But unfortunately for Drago as well, no shot on the one. That one ball getting kicked safe there by the two. Now, does he play a safety shot or does he play the aggressive bank shot? I don't really think there's any value in playing the bank shot. Why not play the right shot? Bit of match practice. Just sneaked it behind the two. And that's a very good safety. <laughs> Made more difficult for the escape by the, the green six that stops Efren going to the other side of the, the table. But there's a chance to play a sluker back here if he can contact the ball full. Good pace on that shot. Tony gets down. Barely gives us a chance to try and figure out what he's going to do. Now clapping every shot here. If they play at this speed, they may as well just clap continuously. Great representation from the Philippine contingent this year. There really no one that didn't turn out. One of the Filipino stars, Jose Perica, now lives in America, failed to make it through the qualifying stages. Just not getting the balls completely safe, Tony. Well, they're safe, but at this level of play, leaving your opponent this type of shot can lead to problems as he can get you in a very, very good snooker back. He doesn't want this to really go in. Well, perhaps he does, I don't know, but he's left himself a very difficult two. They love that. <laughs> perhaps somebody's just told him a joke at the same time. Whether or not he can pot the two past the five, but then trying to maintain position for the three is awkward. Oh, it's tight. <laughs> no, safety across the face of the two. Left hand spin, trying to keep that ball as close to the bottom cushion as possible, but concentrating on sending the blue two in a direct line at the table. Tony spotted something very quickly. Yes, I thought he might be playing that shot. He's just come unstuck, and now Efren's got the choice. The 2-9 combination, or run the rack normally. The 2-9 would be a winner. A little more difficult than just slotting the two and in playing position to the three, though. So he's taking the overland path to victory here. I've got a feeling he's going to be pretty sure-footed on that path regardless. came out to watch 
here today have really been treated to some terrific nine ball in this match no different. Reyes putting on a clinical display not only of breaking but masterful positional play and safety play with it and that's the reason that he takes out Tony Drago 5-1 smiles and handshakes both players through to the last 64 but in this instance a message to all the pool playing world sent Reyes a 5-1 victor over Tony Drago.